right there, and they welcome you. Oh, there's a logo. We're not going that way. We're going this way. Yeah. Very good. If you open it up and flip it on the back side, you will see some large, larger uh, little inserts showing this side on the other side. We're going to head in this direction. How long have you worked here? Uh, I'm a volunteer. Uh huh. Or volunteer oh, here. I've been here since uh, 2012, so that's what eight oh, years. Oh wow! So. Actually, I guess I'm in my ninth year with. Them. Yeah. Is this where they do bring the horses? Uh, no, this no? is where they have horse shows. Oh, horse shows. Okay. I'm Ordinarily, a... this is where we would have our fall frolic. This is your first lesson. This is an old trail sign. Been here longer than I have. This is a new trail sign. If you'll notice on here, it's got a bunch of information. On your map, you'll find it as E1. Anybody have an idea what the E stands for? Easy. Easy? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. All right, I'll give you a hint. This is who's allowed on this trail. Horses. Horses. Hikers. No, bikers. no bikers. All right. On your map, you're going to have three different letters on some of the on the uh, markings here. You'll have B indicate biking. That's all the way over on the other side of the greenway. If you see a B, that's for biking. If you see uh, an H, that's for hiking. Hikers can go on any trail in the Greenway. Bikers can only go on biking trails. Horses go only on horse trails. A. And that's marked with an E. Got it. Equestrian. Can't yeah. be an H for e horses. For it has to be an E for equine. Oh. Got it. Which is Latin for horses. So that's the different numbering systems that we have. The nice thing about these numbers is that they are located, or these trail markers, are located approximately a quarter of a mile apart. So you can kind of keep an idea, and eh, give or take, about how far you've gone. And if you are not too sure where you are, you can look at this. Another little neat thing, you see this little symbol here? Yeah. It's a QR code. If you've got a phone that has a QR reader, you take a picture of this symbol, it's going to bring that map up on your phone right where you are. You can enlarge that map, but then you can't see it on your phone. <laughs> anyway, this will show you exactly where you are if you have a QR reader. Personally, I like a map better, but you know, this is one or the other. And lastly, but not least, it tells you what trail you're on, you're on Timberline. Now, a word of warning. This is a horse trail. It is a little bit rough in spots. It's got a little bit of horse poop in spots. Some fresh, some not so fresh. If we see any horseback riders, please move off the trail and let the horses go by. And stay still. I'm glad we don't have any. I love dogs on my hikes, but the horses a lot of times don't like the dogs. So if we see any horses, we're going to move off. But the other, so there'll be some trails we won't have to worry about horses. We'll talk about that later. Any questions before we get started? Everybody know where you are? Yep. <laughs> okay, let's go. It goes in that direction. Blue Star is the longest trail on the Greenway. It goes from one end of the Greenway all the way to the other. It's approximately seven something miles. It's a neat hike. It takes me about four to five hours, depending on how long I want to stop and look and, you know, rest. And I'm never in any hurry when I take it. But if you ever do want to take the Blue Star hike, I suggest you leave a car down at that end and have another car up at this end so that when you start up here, you'll have a car down there to drive back in. You don't want to have to hike eight miles back. Oh. But this is, this is a typical intersection right here, and it's on your map. This is a land, um, I lost the word, it's like a dam, uh, 
to prevent water from the highway, Highway 21 is over that way, prevent the, the water that might have trash and stuff in it from getting down and separates uh, Lake Hagler. This is Lake Hagler over here. Walk. But if you have a map, you look at your map, you really haven't come that far <laughs> because all you've done is kind of go up, down, and around. If we had come from there, it would have been about a third of the way. But this is Timberline, so that's the way Timberline goes. Over here is Lake Hagler. If you're looking at your map, you see Lake Hagler. This is another uh, pond formed by a land bridge to separate runoff water from Lake Hagler. Now we have a problem here. Which way do we go? Well obviously we're going this way because that's where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> look around you. you do, do you see a sign for Timberline? No. No sign for Timberline. So if you were not with somebody that knew where they were going, how would you know where you were going? You'd read your map. Right? Mm -hmm. Of course you would. You look at Timberline and you would see that Timberline goes to your right. Blue Star kind of connects up. Well, actually, this is a combination of the two again. So that's why I say you need your map if you don't know where you're going. If you have your map, you look at it and you can uh, see. We have a group, uh, a birding group that actually checks bird nests and bird boxes and wood duck boxes. But I haven't really heard much of the success on the wood duck. Come, I don't, I'm not really familiar with coyotes. Do coyotes like come out? No, they'll be out all the time. All the time. All the time. Number three. It means you've come, what, three quarters of a mile, mm -hmm. approximately. I stop here for one main reason is because of this tree right here. This is a loblolly pine. It's a dead loblolly pine. <laughs> Not a lot of holes in it. Do you know why? Excess fishes and woodpeckers, but they usually do in circles. This is the wood bark beetle. Oh, ah, the okay. wood bark beetle is uh, rampant in this area because it's uh, there's a lot of pines, particularly down in the lower part of the state. Uh, the loblolly pine is a native pine and there's a lot of them and the pine bark beetles come in and absolutely destroy the trees. If I would peel some of this off you would even see their little tunnels going up it. But it has completely killed this tree. Is that one there or is that a carpet? Oh, no, I don't know. That was something. Well, <laughs> yeah. Now you also notice too all around you are fallen trees, limbs, and so on. The greenway does not touch anything that has fallen unless it is a hazard. Like right behind you, it looks like maybe that tree was cut. I can't tell from here. If it mm -hmm. fell across the path, the maintenance guys would come and cut it. Otherwise, it is left where it falls and it is allowed to return to nature. So we have really some very good soil down here. Mm -hmm. But you'll see a lot of this. Now we constantly are losing trees here on the Greenway particularly when we have these straight line winds that come through. You'll see this huge tree mm -hmm. that's just toppled over, roots and all. Mm -hmm. That's from a straight line wind. It just comes in and grabs those leaves up there in that canopy and just throws it over. Everything else might be hanging, you know, still standing, but one big one will go down. This is a constant occurrence, but again, that's nature. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Everybody's doing good? Mm -hmm. All right. And like I said, this is a place where they could hitch their horse if they wanted to stop and take a break or whatever. And the horses, they just, they just stand there. Oh, you know, they, they're not going to do much of anything. Manner. Behind you is a quite a very large tree. Oh, yeah. That looks like a wow. <laughs> white see. oak. I have to try to look. Those leaves are so far up there, yeah. I can't see. But this is a, white, a huge white oak. I would say that tree probably is 100 years old. We have some quite large trees here on the Greenway. Oh, 
Oh, uh, well, okay, <laughs> since, since you've mentioned it, <laughs> this lovely green stuff that you see growing everywhere, this is called Japanese stilt grass. Wow. This is a very invasive plant. Oh. It's all over the greenway now. When I first came, I never saw it. Oh, wow. Then about six uh, years or so ago, I started seeing it over on the other side of the greenway. Since then, it has slowly moved over here. I even found some in my own backyard. <laughs> I took it home. <laughs> no, I didn't. In your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember over there when we were taking the hike, the gristmill hike just covered everything. It has not completely wow. covered everything here yet, but it will. Wow. Deer won't eat it. Aww. Goats maybe, but deer won't even eat this stuff. So it's... It was imported from Japan years and years ago it came in as packing with all of that mm. china and stuff they sent over so what do you do with old packing you throw it out well since then it has spread everywhere oh wow in a couple of years it'll probably cover this entire area here wow. it only lives in the summertime fortunately oh. it does die when it gets cold it comes back with a vengeance blue star is the longest and the oldest as far as I know. Yeah. Now, there might have been some others, but that's always been my understanding. This is nature at work again. And um, my son, one of my sons was hiking on the Appalachian Trail. No, it wasn't. He was at King's Mountain. I think it was at King's Mountain. He was doing that 18 mile loop or something, they were camping out. And he sent me a picture of something that looked like this. And then also up in the trees was on the limb with all these little this streak of white stuff that if you touched it, they would move. He said, What is this? I told him, I said, That is what they call beach, beach aphids. Got another name for it. But this is a beech tree. I call it the initial tree. You've seen the trees with people carve their initials in it. <laughs> Those are beech trees. This is a beech tree because it has that smooth bark. And down here is a fungus. And it's when you see that, you know it's caused somewhere up in that tree. I don't see it now. Are these little aphids? Now, aphid is a little bug that right here on this branch right here. Do you see something right there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I am telling the truth. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure I couldn't see them, but I'm glad. You see the little white things there? Those are the little aphids, and they are literally mm -hmm. sucking the juice out of that branch of the beech tree. Mm -hmm. And wow. this down here is their poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. So when you see something like it is, and the fungus isn't hurting anything, but they are literally sucking the sap out of it. Thank you yeah. so much for finding that. I, I was looking further up, but uh, that's one of the things. And it is, uh, trees are like humans. Mm -hmm. They get sick. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they get well, sometimes they don't get well. But um, there's always something going on within mm -hmm. the forest. And that's one of the things that is so interesting. And most people, you know, would look at that and say, well, mm, what is that? But what that is is something caused by those little things up there. Thank you for finding it. Do you guys like spray or treat for stuff like this? No. You, see it? you just let it do its thing? Well, this beech tree won't be killed by it. No, okay. That branch won't make it probably, but uh, it won't <laughs> kill the tree. Uh, nature is amazing. And if we had, I have, believe me, folks, I could stop every 10 feet <laughs> and yak about something. <laughs> but there are things all in nature that have been damaged for one thing or another, and it's recovered. It's a, nature has a wonderful way of sustaining itself and recovering. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, next next month, I'm gonna do a tree ID hike. I'm doing a little commercial here. <laughs> a tree ID hike where we won't go near as far, we'll just go really about a, no more than a quarter of a mile, but we will, you'll learn how to identify some of the local trees. Cool. And we will talk then more about how nature heals, particularly in trees. So keep that in mind. Okay. Actually, this is a new picnic table. They have an old 
This, uh, this is what we call Campbell's Corner. This is a neat little spot. It's not on the, on the, on the map. Uh, most people don't know about it. Well, maybe I've, I've brought people here before. People are beginning to learn about it. It's a neat place to come. Uh, Mr. Campbell, his name was Bob Campbell. He was uh, involved with the Greenway from the beginning. And when he passed on, his family wanted to do something special for him. So they created Campbell's mm. Corner. They brought in, these are, these are all um, native ferns. These are called Christmas ferns. They will not die in the wintertime. Uh, when you see that with all that silt graph is gone, these will still be green in the wintertime. Mm. Over here you see the rocks and there's a neat little mm. poem over there about, uh, I can't remember now what it was about, some friendship or something like that. This neat little creek that meanders down when it floods, it floods up into here. Oh, wow. uh, some people were asking about all the sand that you see on the trails. That's mm. native sand. Most of that's caused when the creeks flood. This creek comes down from another pond called Airport Pond. Um, Airfield Airport, Airport Pond, I think, which is in the Greenway up that way. There's another story behind that. But uh, it does flood. You can see how it floods all the way over in there. Uh, you have some uh, woods edge fern growing in there. In the springtime, you'll see trillium and, and other plants. Just a neat place. Yeah. And yeah. it's just one that's not, not very often known. And unless you know where it is, mm. you won't know where to turn off. Now, I told you about hickory. Those, uh, remember, uh, I said we couldn't go down hickory because we might have to cross this pond. Mm -hmm. Well, hickory goes right across there. If we had taken that, we would have come right to here. Instead, we went a long way, <laughs> all the way down. Mm -hmm. So, we've been on, uh, you've been on Timberline, you've been on Blue Star. Now we're going to go on hickory, and we're heading home. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. You haven't lost anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? Mm -hmm. No? What did that tree back there, did you say birch? Beach. Beach. That's a beech tree. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, that's one of my, I love all the trees, but I love some more than others. Beech trees are the ones like in the wintertime when you're driving down the highway and you look off into some woods and everything is dead, but you'll see as an understory uh, these little short trees with a lot of little brown leaves on them. Those are beech trees. Those are the little beech trees. Beech trees get huge, but they keep their leaves all through the winter and they're this beautiful kind of tan color. They feel like parchment paper. So you can look at it and you can see those in the, in the woods. Um, trees just speak to me. Mm -hmm. they, they do. And uh, I don't know if you've never hugged, if you ever hugged a tree before, if you've never hugged a tree, try hugging a tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? This is a muscadine vine. This is a native grape of this area and yes the grapes are edible they're little purple things but you have to beat the other critters to them mm -hmm. uh, now i am touching this one if it was a poison ivy vine i wouldn't touch it do you know what a poison ivy vine looks like i think so hairy. it's hairy mm -hmm. if you see a hairy vine don't touch it i have not seen one this is not a an area for poison ivy i haven't seen one there are areas in in the greenway where poison ivy is really rampant but around here it's not really so bad but uh you'll see a lot of these in other places you'll see i mean some they'll get this big these uh and, and of course they're growing up into the trees trying to reach the sun but they don't like cut any of the vines oh, to keep right. the trees no, right. oh, no. actually these are not going to damage Don't touch it if it's hairy. Well, <laughs> not really. They should just take this. Kimberly Loop, they actually incorporated that into part of the um, Timberline that we took. They kind of changed Timberline a little bit and took in Kimberly. So there is no Kimberly Loop. It might be on an old map, but it doesn't exist any longer. Mm. Go on to your right and take Hagler and go all the way around. It's probably about a mile around. Uh, when you come around to that dock over there, where you see that dock and that green grassy, you would go up that and you go back to um, the uh, pavilion where we started out. So if you want to continue hiking, you won't hurt my feelings if you leave me, mm -hmm. uh, but you just go all the way around. It's a beautiful hike, particularly gorgeous in the fall. 
as you can see how pretty it would be. But when you get to that dock over there, you'll know just to go up that hill and you'll be back at the pavilion. So we're going to go back that way. Is that just the Hagler Loop? That's the Hagler Loop. Mm -hmm. And there, there's really not any side trails particularly. You just kind of stay. If, if you're going in that direction, just keep the lake on your left all the time. You'll come to the spillway uh, and the kayak. you see where the kayaks launch around that way. So if you want to go, fine. Back home because I'm getting up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, instead of taking you having to go all the way over there to the pavilion, you can walk straight across to where you parked, uh, unless you just want to walk to the pavilion for some reason. But I want to thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super group. And I hope I didn't tire you out too much. I'm going to go home and get lunch and take a nap yeah. and you know, all of that good stuff. But it was a beautiful day. This is gorgeous. Did you say I might be able to find that passport? Is that in Bethlehem? Yes. Uh, I don't know if they're open or not. You might okay. ask the guys. They're usually out there serving some kind of beverages or something. Um, they may have the pa if If the gateway is open, they may have the passports. What she's talking about is a challenge that they're doing right. with the passports. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, walk all of the trails. And I, they're supposed to come out with them, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But thank you for thank coming. You. Thank you. Uh, have a good day. Is the hiking club active now? I beg your pardon. Is the hiking club active now? In the oh yes, yeah. it is. They're yeah, they're I, I very active. I joined on Friday when I joined this. Oh okay. So, okay. They uh, they have hikes going all week. Okay. In in the morning, in the night, at, at six o'clock, and yeah, you know. Okay. So it's on the calendar. The, on the uh, green light you calendar? need to get into. I don't think it's on the regular calendar. You it need, it ex yeah, it's it on is. the regular calendar. Yeah, it's on the regular calendar on the green red website, and then. You can join them through Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, so I right. got asked, yeah. I asked to join their email, email list. Right. They'll yeah. email it to you. Okay. Bye. Thanks Thank so much you. for coming. Thank, Thank you so much. I'll see you on.